Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Good morning, everybody. It is uh, 8 a.m. on an October morning, and luckily we've got no snow or anything like that yet. I am headed out this morning with... Patrick! <laughs> uh, A.K.A. Patrick the Ghost. Uh, mind you, you look very much living right now. I am. Okay. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll poke you later to find out. Okay. Um, we haven't been in a car on a road trip in a while. A long while. In, probably in a, in a few years anyway. Uh, last time I think I was tormenting you with singing in the ambulance, so maybe I'll have to start a yodel fest in the <laughs> truck. Um, we are headed out today uh, on our way to the town, uh, well, I shouldn't say the exact town because the person might not want us to uh, disclose where they are, but it's a uh, hoarding situation. Um, in this case, uh, someone else was hired to, to start the clean-out process, and they've called me to see if there's things that might be of value. So we're gonna go out there, uh, try and evaluate what's there, and uh, hopefully find a few treasures, which is why I've got the truck with me today, and a Patrick, and we're just gonna go have fun. So off we go. After nearly two hours of driving, we're almost here. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull into the uh, front of the house, and uh, we'll go inside, and hopefully they'll let me do some filming in there, but I'm not too sure. I'll ask, of course, but it'd be better for you guys if they let us. <laughs> we have made it inside the house, and thankfully the folks here were kind enough to let me film. As I said, you know, it's always much more fun when I do these adventures and get to share them with you guys. And they have actually watched some of my videos. And uh, as such, they've laid some things out that they thought I might be interested in. It's a very worn um, US silver dollar, but it's still silver, so... That's cool. We've got some war medals. Already I'm finding all sorts of stuff. It's like they knew. It's like you guys knew what sort of stuff would be of interest to me. And I think I, when we chatted on the phone, I said, yeah, any old watches or things like that. So we got pocket watches. So what I'm going to do, um, do you mind if I use this laundry basket to put some things in? Not at all. Like use it as a shopping basket? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do a little shopping. That's This is probably a World War II era machete. And it's got uh, somebody... It says, does it say Wolverine on it? <laughs> it might. Okay. Well, apparently Wolverine was Canadian. Maybe this is his house. Um, I'm going to put that in there. Yeah, like old swords and things. Quacker oats. Cute. Um, any old sort of costume jewelry that uh, might be around. That's a ring box. No ring, but still neat so there's so much stuff that i'm finding already i'm gonna leave that right where it is on the table i'm gonna continue walking around and start moving things over to this area patrick is hanging off to the side in case i need the the big muscles to help me move some stuff that's you patrick yeah. well and this is neat i remember and it had a price tag on it says so they obviously they were trying to sell it at some point I, these i remember going to smitty's which was a restaurant here and uh, they would have these ballpoint pen dispensers and they were always the worst pens. But um, I have such fond memories of this and that's sort of 1960s, 70s era. That's gotta be something I think we, we set aside. All right, I, there's some big potted pieces, some pottery, which uh, if it has a good mark on it could be something. You know, that's ceramic glazed. Uh, we'll look at that later. I'm such a big kid that the thing I noticed right away was this TCR slot car set and it does have the trucks inside pat i'll hand that to you and we can set that over there uh there's a box of old parts manuals and books for uh old vehicles going back to the 30s it looks like i mean look at the car that's on the cover there that's probably like a pre-war uh pontiac yeah 37 to 42 so that takes you basically right to world war ii um, Canada, of course, entered the war before the U.S., but they, uh, unfortunately, production had to cease on vehicles for that time, so that's a cool box. We'll set that aside. It is always fun kind of digging. Look, brand new VHS. Somebody out there is going, wow, I could really, 
I could really use those. Where are you going to find brand new VHS tapes? Uh, these are Amberola uh, reels, a very early form of uh, music. And if you look on the top there, it'll tell you Silver, Bear, Silver Bell by Jones and Murray. So the, the name of the song is on top. Um, that's neat if we can find the player somewhere in this house. And as we look around, there's furniture and all sorts of things piled. So I'm going to see if I can find the player for that. But in the meantime, I'm going to move these car manuals over. And there's a, uh, it looks like an old Elvis Presley book, The King. Kind of a neat old trunk too. There's all sorts of stuff. This retro sort of radio is neat. Classic. It has a tape deck. It's probably from the 80s back in the, when they were putting a lot of that retro stuff out there. But we're going to, uh, I think, work our way down the hallway and then maybe into the basement. But I'm just going to swing around. Uh, the folks that are here have been working quite steadily on getting this front room cleaned up. So it actually doesn't look that bad right now. But when I looked in the backyard, I could see they had a lot of work ahead of them. Uh, some little transformers and things. Those are always useful. Because I'm just a big kid, really. Uh, this box here. Let's see. Marvel Collector's Edition. That's like a little uh, Mega Bloks, which is the fake Lego. And many of these boxes are marked sell. And um, Patrick, maybe if you want to grab that one, we'll open up some bins and kind of dig through and see what we can find in here. And I can feel I'm going to sneeze here. There's some little light bulbs or just general light bulbs. There's another, it looks like a hunting knife. Maybe, is it, is it real or is it a toy? I think that's real. That one might be real. It feels heavy. Oh, yeah. Well, sure, we could put it in the... El Montero, made in Spain. People are always looking for uh, swords and things of that nature. Caps. It's almost getting hard to find caps. And these look like... Uh, old glasses. They're not quite cat eye glasses, but those are definitely, you know, 40s or 50s era glasses. Which makes me wonder if there's going to be a cap gun in this box somewhere too. It's kind of a mix really, isn't it? There's some pens. I do buy old fountain pens and stuff, so we'll put that in the bin. It is Loads of fun to kind of go through these boxes because you really don't know what you're going to find. But I also want to make sure that I'm being respectful not to make a bigger mess than, than is required to go through this stuff. Little Mickey Mouse picture frame. Just sort of a, a catch-all. I don't even know what that is. It is... Oh, it's a mailbox. So you got a mailbox, little Charlie Brown and Snoopy there. I'm sure I'm going to make a big pile. I'm glad that I brought the truck today. I'm going to tell you that much. Because uh, this house is pretty packed. There's some old clocks and lighters. All sorts of stuff. And you think of the vast amounts of money that were probably spent on buying all this stuff over the years. Let's move this one out of the way. Let's move on to bin number two. Okay, and in this bin, there's an old Eaton's catalog. That might be a reproduction of it. Catalog number 47, printed in Canada. 1970, yeah, so it's a reproduction, but it's still really cool. Patrick, let's put that one in the bin, too. And as much as I'm setting stuff aside, um, I don't even know. Maybe they're going to say, I don't want to sell this stuff. But I'm going to do my best to make an interesting pile. And uh, we got some Barbie puzzles and things like that. Uh, those are, these are Red Rose tea figures. If you would have bought tea back in the 1950s and 60s, you would have got a little Red Rose tea figure like that. And there are people who collect those. 
Um, not as much as there used to be. A lot of the folks that collected that stuff have gotten more elderly and passed on. But there's still enough that it's worth setting aside. I'll hand that to you. Yeah, so you've got Red Rose tea figures, Eaton's catalog, spoons. Like, my goodness, there is a real mix of things in here. That's a couple more Red Rose tea figures in there. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'll go through this last bin on the floor here. And then we'll make our way into the, the uh, basement area and kind of have a look around down there. Shred. Can I go through this box? No, that shred is... Uh, Paperwork? Or, per, yeah. That's personal stuff? Okay. That's the... Okay, shred, cell, cowboy boot cell, DVD player. Okay, I'm going to do a little walkabout uh, in the basement area. And Patrick, if you're up for it to come digging with me... Yeah. We'll bring some stuff up uh, upstairs if we find it in the basement. But look, I'm already getting a pretty pretty good little pile set aside there. <laughs> okay, let's go downstairs. All right, in the basement, you can start to see what they were dealing with before. The aisles, the walkways here are completely packed full of boxes. Now, luckily, this is what you'd consider more like a clean hoard because things are somewhat organized. They put them in boxes, but they stack them and stack them. And uh, if I go down, wiggle down this little aisle here, you know, there's all sorts of just usable things. Not necessarily good for what I do, like, you know, old air mattresses and, you know, cat crawly stations and stuff. Not things that I can use. Um, but you know, you got some old baskets there. This looks like a fairly nice table that's flipped upside down. Uh, oh, there's a box for a Crossman BB gun. Little Fairbanks Morse, uh, logo. That's off a of scale, likely. There's a washboard. Look at all the stuff, hey? You guys see all that? This is where I'm walking now. There's a Singer Featherweight sewing machine. I know what that is already. I don't even have to open the box up. I know. That can go upstairs, Pat. Patrick's being so quiet. He's probably like, yeah, I just don't want to get in the way. But um, there is a, a box here. Oh, that's silverware. Okay, I'm going to pull this silverware out. And the re I'm going put, to put the phone down or the camera down for a sec so I can show you guys. Okay, I did see this old silverware set. I actually don't know what that metal's from. That's not from this box. And it's tied up, but I'm going to slide one of these out. And what we're looking for on a silverware set are actual silver marks. Because the majority of times when somebody comes in and they say, I've got silverware, and you go, okay, great. If it's actually silver, that could be good. Um, but nine out of ten times, it's not actually silver. It's a uh, silver plate and there's not too much value. This box, however, does look fairly old, and it's been tied up with this string for who knows how long. So I'm gonna find a fork, and we're gonna flip it over and have a look, because if, if it's silver, um, it should be, it's supposed to be stamped if it's silver, and it, it's Rogers. Um... I don't know if that's silver or not. That might be plate. A lot of Rogers is plate, but we're going to maybe set that aside just in case because silver is silver. I mean, let's be honest. In a situation like this, geez, I just, you know, sometimes you don't know where to start. That actually might be a, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's photos. That looked like a, uh, a case that would have held something very specific at one point, the, the octagon style case. I thought maybe typewriter or something, but whatever it originally held, it doesn't hold anymore. And there's an awful lot of furniture. What is this? It looks like a 50, oh, it's a VHS cassette auto winder <laughs> shaped like a 57 Chevy. It's just the box for it though. It's not in there. Um, there is a, mid-century modern clock and it says working priced at two dollars and fifty cents <laughs> that's neat i see some old uh, pepsi and canada dry bottles up there and 
sometimes these little horses can be uh, like Budweiser displays. That one is not. But there's some stuffed animals. Lots of furniture. So, you know, there's a lot of books. An awful lot of books. And I'm just trying to... Uh, there are places that I can see and access and places that I can't. There's an antique display case right there. Which, if I had my store, would have been awesome. That would have been a perfect display case for the shop. But alas, I've taken this road of doing this buying and selling. Is that still full? It's full. It's still, it's still a sparkling full. cider. Mm, it's neat, but I don't know that I need sparkling cider. I might need, there are some records here though. And if the uh, records are more in the uh, rock sort of genre, Eddie Rabbit, okay. Johnny Cash. Kathy, if you're watching this, look, your dad's stuff is everywhere. John, John, one of Johnny's daughters, Kathy, watches our channel. So there's a shout out to uh, Kathy. Everywhere I go, there's Johnny Cash albums following me. Are you going to try some of the gum out of you old candy shop? Mmm. Oh, <laughs> you don't feel like... Uh, running into that it looks like those records are other than the johnny cash which of course is awesome uh, a lot of these records are not really the type i would normally listen to or be able to sell but there's many boxes of them so i might have a look at that second row and see if uh if some of these boxes have you know like beach boys and beetles and led zeppelin and stuff like that that's the stuff i'm after but that was Waylon Jennings. Tanya Tucker. I see there's a lot of a lot of country. Which is nothing wrong with country. It's, it's just uh, not as big of a seller as some of the other stuff. Okay. Let's... Uh, I mean, there's all these boxes on this side. That looks like it might be a silver service set. There we go. But it's not silver, but it is a uh, Chef Sheffield cutlery set. That's antler handle. That's uh, usually bone or antler on those things. That's for cutting up your uh, Christmas dinner. Nothing says uh, cutting up Christmas dinner like having uh, dead horns attached to a knife blade. I'm just kind of sifting through and seeing if there's anything that I kind of missed in that box. Some of them, most of the boxes are labeled, which is nice. So I can see, you know, we've got uh, uh, shower curtain and hot water bottles. There's flower pots. Um, the sort of stuff I'm after, boy, I don't know. I see a whole collection of beer cans back there. Like a wall of beer cans. And there are people who collect those things. And at very least, the ones that aren't collectible, you get your money back at the Bottle Depot. Um, I see the top of what looks like I don't know what that is. It looks like three little knobs, like a brass knob. To me, that looks like the top of an old clock, maybe. I might see if I can crawl my way towards that very carefully and uh, see if we can figure out what that is. These look like maybe... Uh... Oh, no, no, this would be records. That's 78s. And what were they listening to? Frank Sinatra, of course. That means there's probably going to be Bing Crosby in here, too. Doris Day. Virtually a lot of people don't... Uh, the the ones I'm looking at just tucked itself back in there. It's like it's saying, don't bother going through. Um, it's the rock and roll, the jazz, that type of stuff. But still, these are 78 RPM records, which means there might be a gramophone somewhere in here. That's actually just gardening stuff. It is what it says it is. Flower pots. Plaster, gutter hoses, flower pots. Okay, I'm trying to reach that box right there. Um, so let me see if I can get close to it. Old lamp. Let's see what it's... Yep. That's an old lamp, all right. They didn't lie. And you've got some... Uh, that, I believe, is a chamber pot. 
Luckily, it was packed away unused. That'd be really gross. I mean, you never know what you're going to find, but... Uh, tins, Jack Daniels, etc. Uh, battery... Film reels, okay. Oh, that box is labeled expensive stuff. That might be worth digging out to have a look at. You know, the, the goal here, the hope is that you find something that the family, you know, didn't know that they had that might be worth a pile of money and uh, give them a bigger check at the end of the day. I'm going to wiggle my way over and grab that box. So I got to put the camera down. Okay, I managed to get this box closer. And this is what I saw. It didn't fit inside of this box. So they had it poked out the side. And it, what is it? Globe for lamp. Oh, it's a lamp. Kind of an interesting lamp. It's, um... It's brass, and it has this glass sort of shade on the top. This funky looking bottom. It looks like it's um, the, in the style of an antique lamp, but it's probably more from the 1970s based on this frosted shade though. It's still cool though. I might put that in the uh, let's chat about pile just cause it's neat. You wanna grab it, Pat? Okay, I managed to reach that. No, there is a uh, carved, I think these are Dutch, that when they, when they heat up these sort of uh, carved petals open, I've seen this before. It's an unusual piece. Okay. Oh yeah, it's, uh, they're just talking about how it's nicer to clear one thing at a, one area at a time, but you know. And if I, if this was my situation here, I'd be doing the same thing. Let's see. Kennedy assassination, Diana's death, newspapers, old Edmonton journals, war magazines. The smart thing would be to grab the box that says expensive stuff, you'd think, which is right underneath there. Oh, look, there's an old soda dispenser, right? Like from a theater or something. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and just have a look in this one box that says expensive stuff. And then after that, I will, uh, move on to a different room here. It's just so I'm not in your way. Okay. Oh, that old 1970s shade. Oh, there's a hat inside. There's a cowboy hat. Is it a Stetson or anything? It is a Bailey hat. New West from Bailey. 738, so that might actually fit my noggin. i set that over there for now, though. Cowboy hats can be fun, especially if you get a better brand name like a Stetson or something like that. You got that, Pat? This would have had uh, ornate sort of uh, metal claw feet on the bottom, this table. I've had several like this and I had to redo one for the shop and it oftentimes breaks at the base. They must have just sold a pile of these around Alberta back in the day. Let's see. I would just be tickled to find a box of old Hot Wheels or something or you never know. We, I mean, there were some Transformers up there. So I'm going to move that box and we'll get to the, the one that's marked good. This stuff was marked expensive there we go expensive stuff so let's see what the and it is all wrapped it feels like it's glassware well that's just an ashtray that's definitely not an expensive thing i mean it's possible that they also just reuse this box from something else that feels like a wooden box little hinged box is there something inside of it no so an empty wooden like cigar style box it looks like the the back end of a of a decoy there i mean that's the thing what one person thinks is expensive to them might not be so much there's an old uh there's an old bottle right there. Geneva. De Kuiper. Quip so yeah, I don't know what, it looks like an old alcohol bottle. There's sort of 
ashtrays and things in here. So maybe what I'll do is I'll let the I'll let the owner of the house go through that and see if there's anything that's uh, precious to them or um, anything in there that uh, might be super cool. And I'll continue my hunt. Uh, there's still a couple garages and some other places to go, but I mean, there's so many boxes. It, it really is like, well, where the heck do you start and where do you stop? And, you know, because, you know, if there's boxes of uh, the right type of bottle can be valuable. There's a, <laughs> there's a church pew. I didn't even see. You can't even see it. It's on end. There's a church pew back there. Um, but okay, we'll move on to a different room. We found a couple neat things right off the bat. And we'll continue hunting and see what else we can find inside these boxes. What is behind this door? It is an attached garage that has been completely filled with stuff. Now, I, I was told that as a hobby, the uh, person that lived here um, did garage sales. Since then. And they sold uh, things. So you kind of wonder, well, maybe some of the stuff that they thought was uh, interesting or unique to them might be to me. What's this? Oh, yeah, like a sparkly back-painted Beatles picture in a Las Vegas sign. That's cool. Hey, Patrick, we got one for the upstairs. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Thanks, guys. For sale. Do you guys have this Predator outfit? No, that's been, that was sold before she passed. Wow, that's crazy. Somebody had a, the, uh, an entire giant Predator made out of metal. Oh, well, that's neat. And that's the guitar player there, too. Oh, the okay. Guitar player. Boy, did you guys ever have some stuff. This is a, uh antique hanging uh, style lamp. I don't know if it was originally... Uh, somebody's electrified it, I think. But that would have been... Uh, actually, uh, I'm going to have a little closer look. A little teapot or kettle in there. I think this is a newer style. But this, generally, when you see that type of lamp, that would have been like a fancy lamp that would have hung prior to having electricity. There's a little Plymouth Dodge ashtray. I'm going to hand that to you guys. Oh, I would take that. But there are quite literally boxes and boxes and boxes of things. And so trying to decipher what is the stuff that should uh, come back. Let's see, there's footwear in here. Oh my gosh. A box says it's full of ram's horns. It's a cute little doll buggy. That she must have just had as on display or something, but that's a wicker turn of the century uh, baby carriage, or a, it's a doll stroller, I should say. That's pretty cool. All sorts of brass, little statues and cups and things. You don't want to pick the wrong one, though. If you choose poorly, you'll disintegrate like an Indiana Jones. Boy, oh boy. Pen sets. And we've got some books down here. Some more history books. This does kind of look more or less like it's garage sale type stuff in here. Um, but again, there's so many boxes and so many things to sort through. It's really hard to say. Um, the doll stroller would be of interest if that's something you guys would sell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and I'll hand that out to you. And we'll put that off to the side because that's a cool piece. Here's a little bassinet. Oh, if, the, if these paints were, if those paints were good, those always come in handy, those little tester bottles. It's funny the stuff I look at. Tester's model kit paint. I'm surrounded by all this stuff and I'm looking at the stuff that you could pretty much buy. But this space goes back really far. And there's tin cans and, I mean, I don't know how a person, there must have been like a little aisle here at one point that's been uh, closed in since then because uh, this garage is pretty, pretty full. Royal Gala, let's see, wine, breadboards. Uh, at least the mo most part, things are, uh, I'm going to try and wiggle my way over here just so I can kind of see what the heck is going on behind the curtain. Oh no, there's a predator right there. There's one of those giant predators right there. See? Well, there is. There is a giant predator. 
Well, that's something if you didn't if you didn't know that was there, that could freak the heck out of you. Yeah. Um, geez, I was told that was sold. It, nope. <laughs> Unless they had two. Maybe they had two. It, it looks like it's, you know, it's obviously like an artist made thing. Well, the one that was sold, I believe, was one that you could wear and it was used in, to promote the movie. Okay, this one looks like it's, um, it's welded metal. Okay. Um, is that something you'd sell? Yeah. Okay. Am I going home with a predator today? I'd be in heck. Okay. I believe this one was an actual one they used to do, and this one looks like it's more. I don't know. Display, but we can't sell well, I I'm, I'm going to move some boxes out of the way here. Been back at this angle. Well, it looks like it was curtained off so people couldn't see what was back here. Like these boxes are mainly empty, so I I think this was oh dear okay. It, it looks like stuff was uh, stacked here as a temporary sort of wall, just to make it so you couldn't. You know, there's some stuff marked "Do not touch." Oh, that's a nice roll top desk here. Yep, there's a big creepy predator right there and uh looks like you've got a piano that might be difficult to get out of the garage i might have to almost make a second trip for that guy because uh it looks super duper heavy i don't know where his arms are though arms must be wrapped up on the floor maybe in the blankets but that's one of the weirder things i found inside of a house so far <laughs> that's got to be up there for sure uh, looks like there's a 1960s walking doll above his head there, too. But, yep. Predator just chilling out. Old shoes. Yeah, there is a nice, uh, there's a good quality roll-top desk here. There's a lot of good stuff. This would have been a, I, I would have loved to have uh, ended up buying the contents of all this stuff. It would take me forever to go through. Oh, there's an old guitar up top. Another guitar. I'm going to see if I can get over to it, actually, because if I can, I will buy it. The question is, how how on earth was anybody getting around in here doing anything? Okay, this looks like a tabletop. That's a piece of wood. And i don't want to the last thing i want to do is to break anything or cause any damage but i want to get to that guitar that's up there because it looks like a 1920s or 30s parlor guitar or at very least a 1940s kids cowboy guitar which either way is still pretty cool um what can i stand on or can i crawl through that hole you know, uh, you know I'll, I'll save it for you well it's if only you like it, it is like feet away if i can outsmart this pile I might have to actually just crawl through this little hole here. Tell Melissa I love her. <laughs> if I if I don't come back through, I'm actually tunneling. I'm going to tunnel my way through to get to that guitar. Okay. For this, okay, will this rack move any farther? Is as far as it goes. If we can get this rack out of the way. Just so I could get my keister down there. Actually, I might just be able to slide these clothes over enough that I could back my butt up through there. Okay, is there room to crawl? Maybe. I, I see a, a potential passageway here. Oh my gosh. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna pass that through. You got it, Pat? Okay. That's why it's handy to have a Patrick with you. Okay, I'm going through inches above my head. Okay, it's going to take some doing. I've made it. Something called a play tune here, Patrick. Okay, I can finally reach this thing. It looks like it's in terrible shape. What brand is it? Doesn't say. But that is an old guitar, and that's a three-quarter size parlor, so it's probably from the 20s or 30s.
still has strings on it. Was it worth the, the dig? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. We'll find out if it was worth coming back over here. <laughs> Moved my way out of the uh, tiny little space there in the garage uh, out to their garbage pile. And there's a uh, good usable baseball bat, Spalding, made in Canada. You know, some baseball bats, especially if it has a player's name on it, can be quite collectible. I found one, uh, I had the uh, Joe Jackson baseball bat. We, we got pulled out of a barn. Uh, let's see, this is stuff that they're planning on trashing, but there's, you know, little pots and pans and things and just a lot of generic stuff. I mean, that's, that's the thing when you go through a, a house, it can be very overwhelming for a family to sort through and sift and see what's salvageable and what's not. Um, so I'm just scouring the trash pile. See, like there's um, porcelain enamel pots in the garbage pile. And uh, this is where I think I might get a good deal if it's back in this pile, <laughs> since it's dumpster bound. Um, but it's very easy for somebody just to go through and, and start throwing a lot of things out without kind of going through it. Recipes. A whole bunch of uh, candy from years gone by. And one thing that is a good sign when you see it is when you, when you come across a, uh, a box full of coin rolls and coin supplies, that means that somebody was saving and stashing money somewhere. So did it end up out here in the trash or is it still in the house? That's the question. Look, there's uh, a lot of good, like, usable stuff. The old tinsel. This is where, you know, I have to try and pick as much good usable stuff out of here as I can. You're going through the recipes, Patrick? Yeah, I don't think there is. Oh, what is it? Uh, the receipts or something. Oh, single six convertible. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Car receipts and things. Okay. All right. There's another garage here. You can see they've got their dump bin ready. And that is usually what you do. I always tell people when they're going through this, the easiest thing to do is to go through all the garbage and get it out first. And then uh, start working your way through the good stuff. Okay, the other garage. Oh boy. We've got a, uh, some antique lamps. That one's turning uh, sort of a pinky color due to the uh, lead that was used in the glass. Lots of tables and chairs, old skates and torches, old books. This is um, kind of a neat thing because uh, this is from an old soda fountain. So uh, this is where you would have put the syrup to dispense, you know, like you know, Archie comics. <laughs> There's uh, music rolls for player piano. Lots of old tools and stuff. I mean, uh, I do this a fair bit and this is almost overwhelming. This is a... Uh, Hudson's Bay bottle. It's not terribly old. This uh, Royal Charter stuff would have been sold more recently, but um, people do collect Hudson's Bay things. And so even uh, four little bottles like that, or they've got five of them, Hudson Bay, of course, being one of the oldest companies in North America and still in existence here in Canada, can be quite collectible. And there's boxes in here. Let's see. Let's see what's in box number one. It really is just a lot of everything mixed in here. From uh, saran wrap to board games to everything in between. Open up the second box. You've got like a burlap sack. Some uh, cow cups. A radio out of an AMC. The factory deck out of an AMC. Which to somebody, if you have an AMC missing that radio is like super cool thing to have a lot of this looks like it's glassware in that box and of course i'm trying to be uh, cautious of the fact that the, the family has probably not gone through some of these boxes themselves so i don't want to take away from the the majestic nature of what they're doing either but um you know when you're on a limited time frame like we are you gotta 
kind of dig quick and see if you can find some stuff to make the trip worthwhile. Over in this area, there's a lot of furniture. I see, this is kind of a neat thing. That's a, a bent wood kind of kneeling stool, unusual design. Um, I, I have not come across a lot of like uh, teak or mid-century. There's a lot of turn of the century through 1930s. This should be a little typewriter in here. Actually, that would be upside down. On a typewriter, they usually sit on the thin part of the lid. And, oh, somebody has it in upside down. That's okay, but that's what's in there is a typewriter. And I'm always kind of keeping my eyes open for oil cans, which there is a big oil can there. That's not really a... That's a little bit on the older side, I guess. It's probably worth picking up and not leaving here because uh, probably no one other than myself and the people I know would know what the heck that is. That's just like an industrial oil can, but that can go. Uh, I did see something back here that is kind of neat. Um, this is a plant stand. That's not what I was looking at. This is a little sewing table, like a little sewing compartment table. And look, it's got all, all its stuff in it. It's a little bit broken though, sadly, so it'll need some repairs, but these accordion out and they're really handy things to have and people still do use them. So in, uh, even in a situation like this where it's broken, I'll still probably uh, end up buying that. Some extra little sort of containers here for your kind of curios. This is a neat piece. I think it is a, uh, is a gentleman it's here pointed out a traveling salt and pepper set. So you've got your, you know, salt and pepper to go. Good. No, no, I don't need your salt and pepper. I've brought my own. Here's a neat little wooden box. Let's see what is on the inside. <coughs> this box is made from a piece of oak taken from Windsor Castle in the alterations of 1826, supposed to have been placed there in the time of Henry the First in 1121. Okay, well, sometimes, you know, you buy the story, but a piece of Windsor Castle, how often do you find that in, in amongst a house full of stuff? I mean, we found a predator, so it shouldn't surprise me that there's going to be something cool like that, too. <laughs> well, isn't that neat? Whenever I see a box kind of like this, I imagine it's the sort of thing that you would have got uh, fancy clothes or something in. And yes, of course, there's a, uh, a mink shawl in there very classy if you're going for that 1940s sort of look mind you fur has fallen out of fashion of course people don't like wearing uh fur coats and things like that aren't really um a thing that people do much anymore but that is a a nice piece of uh good 40s or 50s clothing and what appears to be very decent shape too this box is marked cowboy boots and boy are there cowboy boots? You got snakeskin. Oh, lots of snakeskin boots, leather, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know what the market is for uh, slightly used cowboy boots, but I guess I could take a risk on that too. <laughs> Why not? He's got to find somebody with that specific shoe size. Mind you, that looks like it hasn't really even been worn, that one. Maybe some of these will be in decent shape. Okay, so another one of the bins. Little seam, little, what does it say? Little hostess set tied up in a what looks like old nylons. Yeah, some of these stockings got worn out and they use it to tie up their stuff. A cast iron truck, gumball machine. We got a little, probably foreign. <laughs> what country is it from? Don't matter, just mark it foreign. <laughs> A lot of these were made in Germany, and that might be why they marked it foreign. If this was uh, wartime, they might not have wanted to support the, uh, the the Germans at that time. An oil can. Okay. So oil can, yeah. Gumball machines. I don't know. I, I guess we could probably just stick this whole bin aside. As much as there's some stuff in there I can't use, there's enough that I can. So we'll stick that whole bin aside. Thanks, Patrick. You're That's Patrick. What a good, what a good fella he is come out with me today. I feel like I'm an old Patrick lunch after this. There's another bin. Well, Burks, that's a good sign. Retirement gift. So this is what you want to see. That, that People aren't collecting these sort of silver plates and stuff themselves. 
Uh, it's made in Italy. Unfortunately, it's not silver or anything. So as much as this was probably an expensive piece coming from Burks, which is kind of like our Tiffany's here. It's like Tiffany-esque place. Um, not super collectible. Uh, some old books. Lord Nelson Pottery. Staffordshire. And I think there's some teacups and things like that around too. So Cameo Vellum. Oh, these are these little uh, postcards. I've seen these. I actually have had that before. I should have known. It looked familiar. It's funny when you've had so many things come through your hands, you recognize some stuff and then others look like that sewing machine. They look for There's an old uh, store thermometer from from Kalele, Saskatchewan. <laughs> we carry a large stock of merchandise and our prices are lower. Well, we'll take their word for it. And there's a little, uh, what's this, easy stitch. Oh, that is like a little uh, serger. Like a, so like a pro anytime, lightweight and compact, complete sewing system as seen on TV. That's probably a neat thing that uh, somebody could use. It's not old enough for what I normally do. Textbook of anatomy. And this looks like another... Uh, um, cutlery set for carving. Yeah, it's another carving set. Connoisseur's Choice with the polished uh, bone handle. Oh, some neat little things in there and some old books. Found a camera case. We're just going to cut the lock off it and see what's inside. It looks like a 35 millimeter might be in there or not a camera at all. No, it's underwear and uh, lotion. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna wipe it on Patrick. <laughs> oh my puppy. All right. Back in the corner here, we've got a nice old console radio. Unfortunately, the value has not really increased on the old wood radios like that too much. It's probably worth a few hundred dollars though, uh, to the right person. And this, I believe this is a, uh, that's gonna be like a record player, like a, uh, or maybe an Amberola or something. It is gutted, unfortunately. That would have been a nice radio at one point. So you would have dropped that down. There would have been a radio in there. And you can see where the speaker grill was on the bottom. Fortunately, there's nothing left of it. You got some empty boxes here. Those might be pretty valuable to you guys. <laughs> so empty boxes, lots of furniture. Boy, just a lot of stuff. Well, after a pretty fun and uh, robust morning digging around in there, I ended up filling up the entire back of the truck all the way full. In fact, it's almost tilting out the back end here. I gotta close it up. That is one full load of cool stuff. And uh, they're gonna call me when they go through and find more, hopefully. So back in the city now, I'm on my way home to do what I think is the fun part, and that's go through this stuff, because I was literally buying it by the bin full. So we have unboxings to do. I might even do future videos, like uh, unboxings from the uh, hoarder house. But I have buckets and boxes and all kinds of stuff to go through, and that's what I'm gonna do. But before I do, I gotta say goodbye to Patrick. I'm gonna drop him off at his place. So then Patrick here, I'm not the only one that found something today. What did you get? Oh, I bought myself a little laptop. And see if uh, I can get it working again. Yeah, because you know how to fix computers and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you got a 17 inch laptop. We don't know if it works. Yeah. But you're going to report, you're going to let me know later on. Definitely, we will do. Is that what you're going to do when you go home now, is tinker on it? Yeah, I got to do that and some unpacking to do. Oh, yeah, your stuff all showed up yesterday. Finally. Finally. Well, <laughs> thanks for coming to help me today. No problem. Taking time out of your day to come on a road trip. Oh, yeah. Hopefully yeah, no, it was fun. You had fun, yes. <laughs> well, thanks again, Patrick. All right. So what did I get? Have a look. An entire truckload of antiques and collectibles. I found this mid-century modern star style lamp, or uh, sorry, clock, and it says working right on it. Um, boxes of silverware, buckets of rings and jewelry that I've got to go through. I did get the uh, turn of the century uh, doll pram. Really nice piece. The old slot car set in bins and bins and bins and buckets full of just assorted stuff. So I will go through 
um, these collectibles on a future episode. We'll do um, unboxing the treasures found in the hoarder house or something like that uh, later on. But what a haul of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I'll get more videos up real soon so you guys can see all the treasures that came out of that place. Um, and that's just round one. I got to go back there again. And after they've searched a bit more, go back and find some more stuff. Um, for me, that's it. Um, I'm changing out the radiator in my truck. So uh, <laughs> I've got stuff I got to do here. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.